I remember reading the script mm. and saying to Roger, Roger, yeah. how is this ever going to work? Because the main character is so, so horrible and unlikable. How is this ever going to work? But he said, well, I know that they know what they're doing, so I'm going to do it. And then when they cast Bill Macy in it, he's still so horrible, but he's so pathetic yeah. that somehow you feel sympathy for him. So it was brilliant casting on their right. part. I think I, to this thing about Joel and Ethan, they're really brilliant at cast. I mean, the strangest thing is then they do this little film and they think, well, it's sort of nothing. It's just our little film to, you know, we've always <laughs> wanted to make it. And suddenly it's this sort of like great big success. It was so funny. <laughs> it was so there funny. How oh, can you tell? You yeah. yeah. <laughs> just goes to prove that the film business is crazy. Yeah. I think there's something about coming to a place anew and seeing it with fresh eyes. It was very interesting when we were talking to the photographer Alex Webb, who is now photographing Brooklyn, where he's lived for a very long time. But he said, he said until he photographed other places abroad, Mexico and, and Cuba and places, he didn't feel he could photograph his backyard. And I find that really interesting because if you look at the kind of directors and cinematographers that have portrayed America, a number of the best, most revealing portraits have been done by mm. outsiders. You know, obviously, mm. Wim Wenders and Robbie Muller, uh, Paris, Texas is, is mm. the classic example of a picture of America that mm. is, 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 it's the same America we all see, but somehow it does a different take on it. And I have a great admiration for Fargo for that reason, for the economy and sort of minimalism of the filmmaking, that it, it is really invisible, isn't it? And it highlights the desolation of the place. It highlights the characterizations of, of the actors and sort of magnifies the, the behavior that's so, this sort of North Dakota nice, mm -hmm. that's so specific to, to that place. How was everything today? Yeah, feel good now. And I, I've never seen a film where every scene and every camera movement and shot is just so simple and purposeful. Yeah, well, I mean, it started with this front front page of the script saying it's a true story. Well, it's actually on the on the, the crawl, crawl yeah. at the beginning of the movie. You know, this is a true story, but you know, names have been changed or whatever it says. And uh, you know, so immediately you think, well. Well, kind of, is it? So for a while, I did think it was, you know. I mean, but it is based on, I believe, it's based on newspaper articles and different things that the boys had accumulated and put together in the one story. But the approach, the first time I talked to John and Ethan about it, they said they, they wanted it very minimal. They wanted it, it, it's like a drama documentary, but they wanted it to feel like, a, a, to me, they said a Ken, Ken Loach type film where actually the camera's in the corner of the room and it's observing things happen. They wanted it very observational. I think that changed to a degree because the film needed to connect to, you know, the characters, whether it be Fran or Bill Macy. So you're actually personalizing it and, and putting it a little bit more in their point of view. It's not strictly observational as maybe some of Ken's films are. And it certainly wasn't shot with long lenses, as, as, or longer lenses, as, again, some of Ken's films are. And so in a way, they kind of, they kind of ha came up with a story that was perfect for those restrictions. And, yeah. and, 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 and it allowed the minimalism that it actually allowed, that, that enhanced the concept. And I was struggling the other day to think on, on Fargo, where I actually used a film light. I know I had some, but I'm very, I was struggling. I know there's certain scenes, like the bathroom in the, in the house, when Bill Macy's wife is kidnapped. That was a set, so obviously I lit that. And there were certain places where I had sort of bounces on locations, but very little. Most of it was 
kind of bare bulbs and little fluorescent tubes and little gags, you know, a lot of gag lights that Bill and I kind of made up. And I say working with Joel and Ethan, it's so efficient because you know they're not going to do anything else. You don't have to kind of light the whole world just in case they're going to look, you know, another way yeah. or track from outside inside, you know. Mm. You, you expect a feature to be lit and you expect a kind of working method in a feature because it's a feature and you just read so much about Hollywood filmmaking or whatever. But it's not, it's not true, as you know. It's why some of our technical awards are so ridiculous, isn't it? Because how Absolutely. can we possibly judge something when it's all about what's right for the story? I, I did Shawshank <laughs> just before Fargo, I think, because yes, it was after. It was, yeah. mm -hmm. and, um, and that film was quite well received. I was nominated at the Academy. And I went to, I, I wasn't a member of the ASC at the time. I went to the ASC clubhouse for the first time. So I, I didn't know anybody, nobody knew me. And uh, I heard some people talk and they said, well, yeah, Shawshank was, looked really nice, right. but it was shot like a documentary. There wasn't any lighting in it. So I, I, you can't vote for that as cinematography because there's no lighting in it. And I, I thought, well, that's a really big compliment. And actually there was a huge amount of lighting. I don't think I'd ever used so much light. Which is pretty amazing because if the cinematographers yeah. don't recognize it, and, how are the other people you, that vote going like to recognize say, it? But how can, you, how can you judge? I mean, you can't, you know, you can only judge a work just for what it is and the technique behind of it should be seamless anyway, you know, I think. I mean, I usually judge exposure through the eyepiece. It's a bit different now with having a monitor, you know, on-set monitor, calibrated monitor, but I, I still judge exposure through the eyepiece mm. unless I'm sort of concerned about something in particular. When Marge is, uh, is, is, is going back to the site and seeing what the, the dead policeman and, you know, the wreck and everything's trying to figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're mm -hmm. quite long shots and the light was changing quite dramatically within a shot and I, I was operating, I wasn't stop pulling, so I was guessing where it was going to go. And I do notice, seeing the film now, that some of the shots are a little bit... Uh, exposure's a little bit off, I must say. Cause oh, some really? A little bit grainy, yeah. Oh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, no, so no, I, I really noticed that. Um, and wow. I, 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 but I, when I was shooting film, I always gave it a little bit more than my meter or my eye would tell me, actually. It's wonderful, Roger, how the, again, that the cinematography is like the, a supporting actor in this film. You know, or, or perhaps that's what cinematography should always do, isn't it? Is support performance. Absolutely. No, absolutely, yeah. I mean, again, their films are so performance-driven as well, aren't they? Character-driven. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're certainly not trying to do something that um, overpowers that, you know. Sometimes, do you, do you think about how you can help performance? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the oh, time. Oh, 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 yeah, all the time. You, you just don't light somebody or shoot somebody without regard for the character and the moment in the script. I mean, you can't. Mm. And can you give us an example of how you do that? I mean, just just for me geeking out, if I'm a fly on the wall <laughs> watching your process and the thing is going through your mind as you're framing someone like, how about Benicio, this, like Benicio. framing yeah. Frances McDormand, <laughs> as she likes to say, there's a critic that described her face as a, na as a, uh, a national park. Yeah, yeah, but you, <laughs> you know, know. It's, it's interesting on this, on this film. It was kind of, I think, important that she appears an in innocent. She really is our revulsion to the world, you know. She's innocent seeing this world for real, for what it is, and, and it's dark and dangerous, and we can't understand it, and which is why the end scene of her with her husband uh, at the end is so powerful, because it's very similar to the end of No Country for Old Men, frankly, mm. you know. In the midst of this ultra-violence, mm. and in the midst of the way they show, you know, the, the, the landscape in all its desolation, 
there's still a real love for yeah. these characters. Yeah, you know, there is. There's, there's there not is. a cynicism yeah. here. Mm -hmm. no, as no. you say, and it's with Marge, isn't it? So it's almost yeah. like, okay, we're going to test the American yeah. character. Let's put it to the test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And, and, and justice wins out, doesn't it? You know, and yeah. it's, this Amer it's this very homespun version of yeah. American justice. And, yeah, I, and I love, really And that's what true, I love yeah. about the films. I yeah. think that's really true. I think they can kind of make fun of characters, but in a loving way. Oh, hey, they said they were going to the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, is that useful to you? Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. It's like mm. they're making fun of us, of people. We're all like that. They're saying, mm. this, 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 this could be you. This, we're all like this. But we, we are among this world that is a darkness to it outside of, mm. you know, what we know. That's what I think it is yeah. to me anyway, but you wouldn't hear Joel mm. say it like. The, the best films to me, I, I don't really remember what they're about. I just remember images and scenes. And Fargo stays in the mind for that reason.